This episode of Rolling Tape is brought to you by Suspense with a Camera, a filmmaker's guide to Hitchcock's techniques. Available in bookstores now. Whether it's a documentary or a feature-length film, one of the best ways to get feedback during the process is screenings. Dorothy Fadiman joins us today with pointers on how to do a proper screening. Since 1976, Dorothy Fadiman has been producing documentaries on social injustice and human rights. She's an Academy Award nominee and an Emmy winner, and she wrote the book Producing with Passion, Making Films That Change the World. Welcome to the show, Dorothy. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. All right, let's talk about screening your film. Well, I don't start with screening them for the public. I actually start by screening them to a small group of friends and family. And what I do is I take the work in progress at a fairly early stage, sometimes just the initial interviews, and I'll invite about half a dozen people to come and see what I'm working from and what I might put together. And then I give each person a little feedback form. And I want them to candidly tell me what they think, what they feel, what their reaction is. And that's one of the major ways I get tuned in, not only to what I like and what I want and what I think I'm going to get, but how people feel when they see this person and a little bit further down the line when they see the story evolving. What kind of information do you put on the questionnaire? Uh, That's a really good question. Well, first of all, I want to know if you feel comfortable with this person. Now, whether or not you feel comfortable does not necessarily mean they'll be in or out. But if an interviewee makes the viewer feel defensive or protective, or just wonders confused, then I take that into account. What I try to put together is a list of interviewees who feel like the viewer can relate to them, not necessarily look up to them or feel like peers with them, but can relate to them, feel they're going to learn something, feel that it's the beginning of a conversation, feel that they're presenting a point of view they've never heard before. So what I'm looking for is how the viewer feels in relation to the interviewee. When you say you uh, show it to a small circle of your friends and family, how do you decide um, how close should that family be or can it be anyone? Right. No. Good question again. Um, at the beginning, I actually make it my colleagues and family members. I start, I start close and fair. And I also know people will be fairly candid with me if we have that much of a close relationship. And then I begin to expand out to the larger community in my own community of people, not necessarily filmmakers or even friends, but friends of friends, people who know people. And then the next step, which I get to beyond interviewees when I actually have an early rough cut, is people who may use the film. And that's a different level of feedback. First, I'm getting a sense of how people feel about this individual. Then I'm getting a sense of whether or not what the film is about and what this individual is saying will be valuable. What do you do with the feedback at that point? Do you re-edit or do you, um, you know, just wondering what, when you get all this information, what is done with it? Well, I begin by sifting and sorting. If, If the majority of the people don't feel comfortable with someone, chances are, unless I have a reason, I'm not going to use them. If the majority of the people love someone and say, oh, my God, they really touched me or that was a brilliant comment. I felt so moved or inspired or informed. They get to be in. So it's a sifting and sorting for the interviewees. When it comes to the actual material that I'm working with, what I do is begin to ask questions like, is this section too short or too long? Is this section confusing or clarifying? And then I begin to put together pieces of the film 
that give me a sense of how the viewer is responding to the direction the film is going, to the direction the story is going, and what information I may then want to find out and seek from the point I am now to where I'm going. When you first start showing the films, obviously you start with a small group, but do you work your way up to larger and larger groups as you go? Great question. I start usually with half a dozen. There's intermediate size groups that may be 10, 15, 20. But I have had for some of my most powerful films, feedback screenings where I rent a theater with 250 or 300 people and they're full. And for the most strong films, I actually charge for the feedback screening because the feedback screening becomes a contribution to the film. And some of the subjects for which I've done that are HIV AIDS in Africa. I had huge feedback screenings. I charged for them and I made a lot of money toward the production of the film. Another huge feedback screening was a woman with spinal cord injury who has completely surpassed expectations of what the medical profession thought she could do. And she is learning to walk again. So I opened that feedback screening to her community. And she's in a Aikido. She's a black belt Aikido artist. And I opened it to the whole Aikido community. And I had a full house for that. And I charged $25 a person for feedback. And people paid for the opportunity to give feedback. But I start small. So people become part of the process. Good idea. Exactly. Mm. Um, now, we're talking mostly documentaries here. Does this work for feature length films, horror films, comedies, romantic comedies? You know, I've, I've narrowed my focus to documentaries. I believe it does work for feature length narrative films, but I can't give a, a strong answer to that. But I will say that this process works for a really wide spectrum of documentary films. Where in the process um, would you be when you should start thinking about doing feedback films, uh, uh, feedback showings, uh, when the film's done, somewhere in the middle? Well, there's, there's several points along the way, and I'll just say what they are. First, and if I have enough time, I, I do feedback for the interviewees. I get a feeling for which interviewees are the strongest and which ones are the least powerful or the least impressive or the least useful. And then, of course, I have to very kindly say to those people, you know, we had so many interviewees, we're only going to be able to use a few. And that's part of the process is to be able to explain to interviewees that we don't use all interviewees. The next step would be scenes where interviewees are part of a message or part of a story or one location. The next would be what I call a really rough cut, where I have a simply chunked together parts of a film. And then I ask people, does this order work? Does this length work? And I get feedback on that. And the, the next to the final stage would be when I have what I call a semi-fine cut where it's already got its shape, it's already got its interviewees, but I'm not sure yet where the climax should be. I'm not sure yet about where uh, the, the most dramatic moments, not just the climax should be. And then I get very specific feedback of when Molly starts to walk again, this is the woman with spinal cord injury. Would you like to see that all the way at the end or almost at the end or halfway through? Because it turns out with documentary filmmaking and the wonderful software, editing software we have now, that you can put a very dramatic moment anywhere in a film and then you can build a backstory, you can build a progression. So I would say with the interviewees, with the short, with the rough cut, and then the semi-fine cut would be the places along the way where I get feedback. That's something a lot of people wouldn't have thought of is to actually let your audience help you edit the film. That's some really good information. And thanks for sharing that. Have we missed anything before we, in our last minute? Well, <laughs> I guess one of the most 
uh, delicate moments is when you show a film and you say it's the premiere and you say it's finished and somebody will come to me afterwards and say, you actually got that wrong. That's, that's not accurate. So it's very painful and sometimes very expensive, but there are points along the way where I actually have to go back and make a change in a film that I've already finished, but I usually leave a little wiggle room so if that happens, I can make the change. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Dorothy. Thank you.